Hello all my buddies, it's Carmen and welcome to another chatty crochet with me. If you haven't been here before, I will be crocheting a project and chatting with you as if we're, you know, in the room together, even though obviously we can't be in the room together and obviously you're not in the room with me now. Um, maybe we're working on separate projects, maybe we're working on the same project, I don't know. I'm not your supervisor. Um, uh, this is not a crochet tutorial, this is just a chatty crochet along, crochet vlog. Um, but first things first, I've moved. Um, so uh, my background looks different. I don't have like a setup yet, um, but I just wanted to move on because I'm, I don't know if I'm ever going to get like a real setup, but this is a good place, I think. Um, this is my fiance's bookcase and all my books. Um, but yeah. Um, we're definitely still settling in and it's probably gonna take a while um, and there's more things that I want to get for the place um, I want a desk <laughs> um, I have a desk but I want like a standing desk and then I this is my laptop that you're you know I'm using to record but I want like a an actual iMac but yeah there's still some things that I want to get um, but all in all it's about two weeks we're two weeks in about and I think everything's going great so far <laughs> it's uh, yeah we had some trouble with the plumbing but that's all fixed now and yeah that's basically everything it's been great I wish I could show you my rug that we just got in today it looks amazing um it's a ruggable rug I will put it on the screen here um it's a ruggable rug and it's the um it's the uh, Star Wars uh, um, pattern called Blue Toil, I think, Blue Toil. Anyway, I think it looks great and I'm very excited. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the new background for now. Okay, so on to regular business. So I finished my February blankets and uh, I finished it really early to prep for this move. Um, so I don't have it here with me, <laughs> but I'll put it on the screen screen and to remind you my February blanket was the yarn inspirations faux braid blanket and instead of I'm going by that pattern on there I went by the I think she says her name was Nastasia uh, her YouTube channel I looked at the Jacob's ladder tutorial um, with I think it was like with um, chain links and it was amazing I loved it uh, I think it uses less yarn than regular the faux braid um I, I think I have no idea honestly I have no clue but um I really liked how it came out um you don't have any holes where the braids are and I think that's why I really like it um but yeah uh, I had to, I had a lot of problems with it um I had to readjust the sizing a couple of times um, but the great thing was it went by really quickly. I think I, cr I, after I figured out how long it was going to be, I actually finished the blanket in about a week. Um, so that was really great. And I don't want to even buy more yarn because obviously that would just cut into my yarn budget for the year. So, and obviously I moved. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously I have to pay more attention to the number of yards than rather than the number of skeins. Um, so I think I said that last time too. I obviously have just problems with yarn in general. <laughs> so moving on to March. This is my March blanket. I've already started. Um, this is the Granny Stripes uh, blanket. Blanny. Blanny. This is the Granny Stripes scraps blanket. Um, I originally made it. I originally wanted to do scraps, um, but I ended up buying yarn because <sighs> that's all you're gonna do. All you're gonna do is keep buying yarn until. And yeah, no, you're just gonna keep buying yarn. And that's the uh, that's the scam of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I started this in mid February, and I worked on it um, until about here, until about this row for the um, right before we moved, and then after this green row is when I started the rest of it. So I've only been working on it for a little while but I'll show you what I'm using. So the white is the Red Heart Super Saver. It's my favorite white. And the colored parts, so this is Cornflower, this is Freesia, this is Alfalfa, this is Tranquil, 
and this is coral. So I'm honestly really disappointed in this coral. It's really dark in person. I don't, it doesn't really look that dark on screen, but it looks, it doesn't look like a coral. It's definitely orange and really disappointing. I've never been disappointed by the Knit Picks brand before, but this is the first, <laughs> this is the first time. And I'm not sure if you can tell on screen. I guess you can tell a little bit. Put it by the light. Ah, I'm going the opposite way. So this is, yeah, this is cornflower and this is tranquil. And you can kind of tell if you put them next to each other, but this one is a lot more green blue and this is just blue blue, you know, like a baby blue, I guess. No, like a sky blue. And this is like, you know, greenish blue kind of like a teal color. Ah, I'm really bad at this like opposite way um, filming. But yeah, if I do this, then you can kind of see the color difference. But once they're far apart, you can't tell at all. When I bought the, when I originally bought the colors, I actually bought them for scarves. I bought them a way long time ago for scarves. And then when I was looking for colors for this strap cam, I was like, oh, let's, you know, <laughs> use up the um, the cornflower, the freesia, and the tranquil. But then I realized, because I'm actually doubling up the yarn, I'm not gonna have enough yarn. So I went and bought more. I bought alfalfa and the coral. And uh, I really love the alfalfa. I love this color. Um, it's kind of like a pale neon green. It's kind of, I, I love it. Um, but the coral is really disappointing. So yeah, this time I'm using my trusty 10 millimeter end hook. And on um, Ravelry, it did it does say that it's actually a, an N slash P hook, but I'm going by this, it says it's N. Um, and like I said, so all this yarn is worsted weight, but I'm doubling it up to fake the bulky weight because I think it just looks better. And it's really long. This one is actually, I think, five feet and I want it to be an adult size blanket because um, I think I'm just gonna do the rest of them baby blankets, but I wanted at least one adult size blanket. So yeah, I'm afraid I'm probably gonna buy more uh, the Super Saver, Red Heart Super Saver. So I think I'm actually either gonna buy a yellow or a pink to go along with the disappointing coral because then it'll make it really bright, I think. Because right now it's really, cool colors and then when I introduce the coral it'll be oh I just I mean yeah I love the color scheme I just I think I, I want another warm color anyway so it's just um gr the granny style um I'm actually doing a in a U.S. double crochet instead of I think it's supposed to be a U.S. half double crochet because literally every time I do one of these, I feel like I always read the British version and it's like, do a double crochet. And what it really meant was to do a half double crochet, but, or a half, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. So anyway, it's big and I love it. <laughs> um, but that's what, that's fine. So here I go. Um, I'm gonna start going. So I'm starting, so I'm starting with the coral now. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna switch colors and we're gonna go from there. So one of the topics that I wanted to talk about while um, I crochet is uh, one of the hobbies, another hobby. I'm just a perpetual perpetual hobbier um, that I picked up during the uh, pandemic. And um, it's actually one that I restarted. Um, I guess if you can count that as restarting it, but I'm learning languages again. Um, so, I started my Duolingo account, literally, it says I started it in 2013, and I probably used it in 2013 and period. Like, I don't think I ever picked it up again after that. Um, I did hear that, like, the uh, notifications and reminders got really aggressive. Like, I think it was a, um, like, a meme um, one or two years ago. I think maybe 2018 even? But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, when I definitely picked it up again this year, it was, uh, it was pretty apparent how much more aggressive that it got. Cause before it was like, Hey, 
are you sure you don't want to uh, like um, play a Duolingo for like 15 minutes you know 15 minutes and then like it would like you would just set a time and then it would be like nine o'clock don't forget Duolingo and now it's like hey Duolingo time right now go and you're like whoa okay Duo I'm so sorry I forgot like I was really busy today I'm really sorry um calm down <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. I've been um, consecutively playing. The app says I've been consecutively playing for 157 days. But that does count like maybe three or four skip days. So probably about 160 days um, that I have started since I started. But, you know, like 157 since I that I actually played. So every day I play, I do one round of French, one round of uh, Japanese, and one round of Mandarin. And we won't talk about why Duolingo calls it Chinese and not just Mandarin. Um, but yeah, I actually did these all in school. So yeah, I took French in high school and I took the other two languages, Japanese and Mandarin in college. I've got this huge knot here and I don't know why it's not coming out. Oh, here we go. Oh my God, you guys, this knot is endless. How much of your time is going into not un like unraveling, seriously? So I took French in high school and I took it because we were actually offered three languages, a choice between three languages. Um, you could do Spanish, French, or German. So I took French because it was the romance language and I was all about romance in high school. I mean, who isn't? I really liked my first French teacher, but after our first year, she retired. So uh, they actually got another French teacher for my second year. And I, you guys, I did not like her as much. Um, our first French teacher was really warm and I feel like she was really personable. But I think the second French teacher, she was like cold. <laughs> and I mean, I'm maybe it's just like, you know, obviously it's probably oh my god, nostalgia, nostalgia, that I look back on our first French teacher, but I, yeah, I really didn't like our second French teacher at all. Um, she, I actually looked her up today while um, thinking about what to talk about, and she's still there, so go ahead and look her up if you know what school I'm in. Um, I was in, but yeah, um, I... <laughs> To prep for college, I actually went to French club, and um, <laughs> uh, I don't remember anything we did except one thing. I remember when I was in French club, we went and sang um, French carols, or carols in French, like Christmas carols, to a retirement home or a, uh, a nursing home, and it was so much fun, you guys. I pro was probably like, Nervous to the point of throwing up, but <laughs> I do remember like it was the one of the more fond moments because um, it was the only thing I could remember honestly, and I feel like I had to do it because everyone had to do one thing, you know, um, as part of the club. But yeah, I think um, I was I did <laughs> I did the choir thing because I actually was in choir in middle school, so I thought I could do it, but yeah, it was just like nervous and. <sighs> uh, now this knot is right up choking me on my usable yarn so I guess I just have to get rid of it now yeah so then um I actually have always wanted to learn Japanese um like 90% of all Japanese learners I think I watched a bunch of anime as a kid and I was like oh my god I want to watch all the anime I could possibly can so I'm going to take Japanese and ha so then I can watch the anime without you know like reading the subtitles and I thought it was gonna be so cool but as it turns out that is literally why everyone goes to take Japanese um, so you're just gonna get a lot of you know people who want to learn Japanese to watch anime <laughs> in your class uh, but yeah since I wanted to take Japanese I uh, told my mom and she said you know we're a primarily she didn't say this but <laughs> we're a primarily Cantonese family 
Um, and so she wanted me to take at least one Chinese language. So I took Mandarin in college and, um, oh my God, you guys, my yarn barf, look at, look at this. This is just new yarn that just came out of my skein. Ugh. Never going to get rid of this yarn bar for you guys. Um, but yeah, so I took Mandarin in college and actually I really loved my Mandarin teacher. I actually had him for Mandarin and then I took a lit course called, um, I think it was just called Chinese Literature and he also taught that and honestly he was one of my favorite. He was one of the more memorable <laughs> uh, college professors that I had. Like I had to take philosophy. I couldn't even tell you what my philosophy teacher looked like. I had to take, um, God, I had to take, oof. Wow. <laughs> I'm just blanking on all the classes I had to take. Early, I had to think about how long I took Mandarin for. And honestly, I was like, was it two years or three years? Um, Cause it's, honestly it's blanking right now. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't tell you like who I took. Uh, I took an archaeology class. Could not tell you if that person was a man or a woman. I took um, an astrology class. Could not tell you if that person was a man or a woman. Um, but yeah, I, I could definitely tell you that my Chinese professor was one of the more memorable professors. Especially because like, I mean obviously I had to take the class. Um, because I wanted to take Japanese, so I had to take Mandarin. Um, but he, uh, he was really nice. I, I'd say he had like the persona of a big teddy bear. He was just really nice. He was like large for a giant uh, for a Chinese person. You know, like he had wide shoulders. I'm just picturing like this giant teddy bear of a man, and he was really nice. But yeah, I took it for a couple years and really, I mean, I can say stuff, you know, off randomly, but not good and not well. And um, the thing I remember most about this class is, you know, like Chinese characters are really hard and me growing up in um, America, obviously I spoke English here and uh, I didn't know any Chinese characters, so to practice my characters, I would write them on post-its and stick them on the wall, like just on my dorm room wall. And my mom loved that when she came to visit me in uh, my dorms one year. She was like, why do you have all these random Chinese characters on your wall? And I was like, I'm learning Chinese, mom. Like, what did you expect? So after my first year of Mandarin, I took Japanese. I finally took Japanese. The language that I wanted to take since I was like you know 10 years old and my professor was this wonderful spunky like really jovial woman and uh she <laughs> was Japanese and I think she also taught other languages I remember one of my classmates was going to be a linguist major and like I don't know what you have to do to become a linguist major in um my alma mater but uh yeah, he, um, he had to take Japanese, I know, and she was also the linguist major advisor, I think. So yeah, I was like, oh, you know, you know, I can't remember her name, but I was like, oh, you know, my prof my Japanese professor, I got really excited. Um, I know it's a small school. <laughs> I mean, it was a relatively small school. Yeah, she was also a professor of linguistic um, things, whatever that entails. And um, finally got that freaking knot out, you guys. Um, I'm pretty sure it's in the yarn. I know that's another complaint people have about knit picks, but it didn't really bother me until now, until when I have like two strands at the same time, because now they're not going. Now they're not going. But yeah, I'm going to say like one of the <laughs> biggest complaints about my Japanese class. I took one year of it, and my biggest complaint was the students, my other my other, uh, my fellow students, um, one of them, one of them, I don't remember her name, and I wouldn't tell you even if I did, but one of them, she thought every country that you spoke in English, or every country, 
every country's name was the same in every language. So for example, this was how it came up. You know, you had to say like, my name is Carmen and I'm from, you know, and I'm Chinese. And then so like, if you didn't know, for example, if I, if she didn't say like, oh, Chinese is this word in um, Japanese, you would ask like, my name is Carmen and I am, how do you say Chinese? And she, you would ask that in Japanese, I think. And so one of the guys was like, my name is, I can't remember, my name is Carmen. <laughs> His name is also Carmen. And he was like, and I'm from, what, how do you say Korean? And, or how do you say Korea? And she said, like I said, I don't remember anything. But um, then this girl was like, wait, why is it that word? Isn't it just Korea in every language? Like, she, this woman, this college student claims she took um, Japanese in elementary school and she still thought this. So she thought the word Korea, which is the English word for the country Korea, obviously, um, was the same in every language, including, you know, Spanish, Korean, Chinese, Japanese. Honestly, it was mind boggling. It was like, how did you get this far in life? And then of course, it being Japanese, like I said, you know, like I've wanted to, I, I was one of those people. I wanted to watch anime more, so I wanted to take Japanese. And this guy, oh my God, this guy was a complete Japanophile. He wore to class a t-shirt that said, I want a Japanese girlfriend. And I was mortified. I don't know if anyone else was mortified. I was just like, this guy does not represent me. I mean, wow. Um, <laughs> my teacher laughed at it, but I could not have been, I can't imagine I was the only person that was cringed at that moment, you know? Ugh, I just, I don't get it. Of the three, um, since English is my primary language, I think French is the easiest for me just because it's also a Latin-based language. You know, it writes using the alphabet, the standard alphabet, uh, the Western alphabet, I guess. And you know, looking at a French word, I can guess how it's pronounced just by looking at it. Um, I can't really do that with, uh, you know, I, I guess you could do that with Japanese, um, with hiragana and katakana, but um, you can't do that with Chinese, obviously. Although I think Mandarin is technically the second easiest um, because I have an ear for it growing up with it and um, I understand how the tones work. You know, there's a single tone, there's an upwards tone, there's a downwards tone, and then there's a up-down tone. I think that's, I just call it the up-down tone, <laughs> down-up tone. So I understand how it works. And then so Japanese, I feel like, is has been one of the harder <laughs> languages to learn. Um, so when I really tackle it, you know, it will be very satisfying. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just because you have hiragana and then you have katakana and then you have kanji and kanji is like, is like it looks like Chinese characters, but um, honestly, all the Mandarin that I've learned and all the characters that I've learned have all been in simplified um, Chinese. And so uh, Japanese mostly uses like the old traditional Chinese and I honestly, some of those <laughs> um, characters that I've been learning, I'm just like, I have no idea. Like some of those traditional characters are all the same to me. But I think if I could, like I could read the hiragana and katakana, but I, I mean, obviously I wouldn't know what it would say um, if I don't know the words. I think the nice thing though about Japanese is like it's all one tone, at least that's what my professor taught me. And whereas like, you know, it is hard for Mandarin to have all those different tones because you could say one word and use an upward tone. It would mean something, something totally different if you use a downward tone or a flat tone or a down up tone. So in that, in that for sure, <laughs> Mandarin is more difficult. Um, but reading, I think, um, 
I think Japanese is more difficult. And I think Chinese is nice because Mandarin and Cantonese have the same characters. So in that, I could at least communicate f f with the characters, you know, instead of saying it out loud because Cantonese and Mandarin have totally different um, pronunciations of words, obviously. Or is it obvious? I don't know. I think it's obvious, but you know, I, you could be surprised. I feel like the other thing that's really difficult about using or crocheting a blanket this large is the unwieldiness of it. But it's so warm, you guys. Crocheting a blanket is so nice because you're warm. <laughs> Um, ah, it is literally all over me right now. Yeah, so I'm keeping the white all together because I don't want to cut it. <laughs> so are you guys taking any Duolingo courses? Because um, I feel like it's really easy and fun to learn. Um, it makes it like, you know, when I first signed up for it, it was like, you know, it's like learning is a game. And I was like, it is. And it's really fun. I got so mad the other week. This was like, like, I think this was the end of the year, you know, 2020. And I got so mad because I was finally on diamond level and I was gonna take the whole week. I had the whole week off, you know, between Christmas and New Year's. And I was gonna take the whole week. I was going to put in all that I could, all the experience, and I was finally gonna be top n number one in Diamond so I could get that um, achievement. And this guy, freaking, I was number one all week, Monday through Friday, and then Saturday this guy comes up right behind me, and I'm like, okay, okay, calm down. So I did like 200 experience points, and I was way ahead of him. And then Sunday, he just plays nonstop for three hours, I swear, from like 11 to 2. He's just nonstop playing, and I, it was like more than that, I think, because he ended up like 500 experience over me, and I'm just like, I hate this dude. I got so mad. <laughs> Ugh. Seriously. If there was like a chat function, like that's where, <laughs> that's where uh, Duolingo would fail because it would just be like, like mean expletives like towards other, uh, other players because I was so mad. I was so close. I haven't tried again because I'm really better, you guys. Uh, but if you're wondering, I'm number four right now in my Diamond League. Holla. Um, anyway. Uh, did you take languages in school? Because um, actually the other school in my district, you can learn Japanese, so I was really jealous. <laughs> um, but I'm glad I did it with Chinese um, or Mandarin because then it was easier for me to learn the characters a little bit. Um, my Japanese teacher definitely gave me a little bit of points for knowing a little bit of Mandarin and Chinese characters. Um, did you take up Duolingo in the pandemic, like me? Uh, cause, what, six months ago? That was like September? No, I think I started before that. I thought I started before that. I'll never know. We'll never know, you guys. Yeah, what actually started this uh, topic was I was on Twitter today and um, thinking of uh, just surfing. Um, and <laughs> someone posted, I think I start more Duolingo courses than I finish. Like, and yeah, if you look at my Duolingo, I have a bunch that I started and I did not <laughs> finish all the way through. Um, I'm not even like trying. And that will be a topic for another day. You guys, this coral is just being disappointing after, like, just disappointment after disappointment. Look at what happened in the middle of my yarn. Like, one skein has this, like, uh, plastic going through it. Much disappointing, you guys. I'm just going to try to take it out. Hopefully, it's not, like, detrimental to the yarn. Ugh. I've never been more disappointed in a knit picks. I've never been disappointed in my knit picks. Um, 
But yeah, this time, it's like the color. You call this coral? You guys, you call this coral? And then, uh, this plastic in here. Okay, I got all of it out, but look at what was in here. Look, it's all gone now. Really, nitpicks? You had, you got me, you got me. So yeah, I wanted to start this recording, um, <laughs> I actually wanted to start the recording uh, while I was in the middle of this blanket since I feel like I was always starting a new project while I was um, uh, starting recording and I feel like it's really hard to start talking about it and then like I'm spending literally I spent like I cut out half the recording just because I'm counting out you know foundation rows so annoying by the way um oh you guys i found a new um uh channel that i really like for tutorials um it's tl yarn crafts i'm probably like way late to the tl yarn crafts uh fan page but um i started doing my um foundation rows differently i started doing my edges differently and if this blanket doesn't look great I mean, if this blanket looks great, it's thanks to her, for real. Like, that's why this looks so even now, instead of whatever it was before. Um, yeah, it's really thanks to her. Uh, but yeah, I'm about halfway done of this, oh god. Yeah, I'm about halfway done through this uh, row, so I'm just gonna finish here. I'm going to finish talking to you here. Um, let me know if you like uh, my blanket so far. I think it's super cute. Let me know if you're also disappointed in this coral. Look at all this plastic that was in my yarn. Uh, let me know uh, what languages you took or what languages you have taken or what languages you're learning on Duolingo right now. But yeah, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye.